all right wonderful people welcome back to this wonderful channel where we we'll bring you back to back update and information i see the hot in case you have not joined our social media and what are you waiting for I kindly go ahead and subscribe like comment share and also remember to on your notification button so that whenever our news drop you will be the first we'll collect them let's go down to the news proper as the hot it actually um plenty matters there for my table and as i got to bring them one by one to you uh, the first one will be say there for my table will be say <laughs> oh honey and the bo oh honey and the if you put and complete now you know um they don't they agree small small between the matter uh we mazin and the canon hamadike one of ndibo and uh mazin simon eba uh, the prime minister of the biafra republic government in exile uh, they bring for the table since see, the best thing for Ndibo uh, that the last resort for them is self-determination and um uh, if we are in a working country or in a working nation or continent um you and i will agree that the uh, issue of cessation is not a do or die affair um it was not it was no more in the you know in the uh, in the 70 70 17s you know, 1800, 1700, where you see people fighting a war uh, before freedom. Uh, but as it is now, um, everything, uh, technology and also the rule of law have made things easy uh, because we are now in the 21st century, even though the use of weapons are still allowed, but it is not in the issue of uh, one fighting his or her freedom. There are processes, protocols, means and ways of making these things work out in a better way yeah, but the happiness of every Biafra is that um Ohaneze and the rest of the people are now aligning uh, with the vision true vision of ndi uh, remember that when the colonial master came uh, he find he found ndi to be very strong-headed because the Igbo man was already practicing uh, democracy before the arrival of the white man um even though that our kind of democracy or how we we lived our life was not recorded in papyrus papers uh, like every other continent of the old age but from artifacts and some things we can see uh, we are able to know that uh, this is the kind of tradition that we've been practicing because those days in alibo um the igwe cannot say and have it all because among the Igwe, you see the cabinet members, even it is more or so like a house of senate. The Igbo people have been practicing all these things. You have the cabinet members, you have the Omuna, you have the age grade, you have the Omuada. All these people are people that are there to make sure that the, 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 the Ali Igbo is working out well. So when the white man came, he saw some of these things and um, he decided that uh, the best way to rule us is to divide and rule because one Igbo is a man who has sense. An Igbo man is not a man you can just call and he will just answer you. He would want to know the reason of the call, why you are calling him and what is your intention uh, before he will venture into answering that call. But meanwhile, I will still come back to that particular matter. Let's go down to the information of the day. Ndibo has right to self-determination as last resort and a pro Biafra group. Now then they talk this one. A separatist group Igbo Biafra nationalist IBM has said the Igbo region has the right to self-determination as a last resort to address the issue of marginalization. The convener of the group, Uchame 4, made this claim disclosure in a statement on Tuesday, on Thursday in Oweri. The group based its argument on what is described as the culture of discrimination, suppression, unrepresentation, and marginalization of the Southeast region in the political arrangement of Nigeria. He said, we, the Igbo Biafra nationalists, IBM, and the indigenous people of Igbo nation for self-determination, we continue to insist and make case that the Southeast region has a legitimate right and justification for self-determination, potentially including remedial secession from Nigeria as a last resort on account of deliberate and systematic policy or culture of discrimination, suppression, underrepresentation and marginalization of the Southeast region or the Igbo nation in the Nigerian political arrangement. This argument is rooted in the principles of equality, justice and the resolution of historical grievances, political representation, 
and the demand for quality and equality and justice may for said may for who charged political representative from the southeast region to actively demand equality and justice from the nigerian state said they must articulate their demands clearly and boldly emphasize the need for fair treatment and equitable distribution of resources and opportunities these representatives must demonstrate a governing resolve in their pursuit of these objectives, making it clear that the demands are non-negotiable and must be addressed promptly and adequately. Should the Nigerian state fail to resolve the historical grievances and persistent injustice faced by the Igbo nation, the Southeast region must be prepared to embark on a path of democratic secession. This would involve seeking the both economic, political autonomy from the rest of Nigeria. My people, I don't see as they happen for that matter. Now, which I'm before they bring this one. <laughs> um, uh, I want to bring up one talk uh, that which I'm before, uh, the comment he made there on uh, advising the Southeast uh, uh, governors or those in government to address their matters properly, letting the government know that whatever that concerns in the is non negotiable. But as it is, my brother. <laughs> Um, you know, go fit work for this nation because, uh, in a place where you have greedy, greedy politicians that are just out there for their personal aggrandizement, my people, it will be very, very hard for you to be able to achieve your dreams and goal, because, uh, the man is na onya wasi na onya ni ajalo ntasa na kuya de kuwei, and that is what our politicians have done to us, uh, hasa na kuya de kuwei, that we are not worth it. Uh, they are there chopping the money while we the citizens are suffering. On another information, government terrorized a harmful community in Enugu State, Key One, kidnapped four, including 12 year old girl. The government, estimated to be around 10 in number, allegedly came from neighboring Benue State and took over an abandoned military checkpoint, wrecking havoc for three days. The suspected military group has attacked a harmful community in the Suzo local government area of Enugu State, leading to the death of one middle-aged man and the abduction of four individuals, including a 12-year-old girl. The government, estimated to be around 10 in number, allegedly came from neighboring Benue State and took over an abandoned military checking point, wrecking havoc for three days. According to the community sources, the siege occurred between Monday, June 17th and the morning of Thursday, June 20th during the lead El Capri holiday with no intervention from the police or soldiers deployed to the area since 2003. This incident follows previous attack by the armed men suspected to be headsmen and their local collaborators from Benue State which led to the displacement of seven autonomous communities in a A resident of a Hamofu Chika Omori has identified the young man killed by the assailant as Chukwemeka Miracle from Amede Autonomous Community. According to Omori, who spoke to Sara Reporter some Wednesday, Miracle was attacked and killed while returning to a Hamofu from Obiago where he had gone to trade. He was reportedly shot dead by the government who have been terrorizing the community. The incident has triggered widespread outrage and apprehension among the community, prompting residents to urgently call for enhanced security measures to ensure their safety and safeguard their property. Omori said he went to Obago, a neighboring community in Ebony State, so when he was coming back to Ehamofu, he carried two women, including a two-year-old girl who was going back to school. On getting to the checkpoint, a bandit who some were on military uniform intercepted them. While the women could not run, Miracle took to his heel, trying to escape. Unfortunately, he didn't know that the bandits were many and grouped themselves. So, when he escaped the first group, the second group intercept intercepted and killed him. The little girl identified at Chidiogo Ekpe and old woman were abducted to Benue State. Sahara reporters report that on Wednesday, June 19, some government kidnapped two individuals, Mr. Ojeni Francis Onyema from Amofia village in Omo Ehamofu Autonomous Community, who was on his way to his farm, and another person from Imo State, a student of the Federal College of Education 
were harmful. The incident came as a green reminder of the community of the community's vulnerability as Chidor Gore's nephew was killed in a similar attack by a suspected headsman in 2021 in Obago community. A former chairman of EC Uzo, local government chief Eric Ebe, who narrowly escaped the attack, described the incident as horrific and terrifying, highlighting the trauma and fear that the community is experiencing. Ebe, who spoke to Sahara reporters on Wednesday on the telephone, said the bandits riddled his car with bullets. He described the attack as a kidnapped attempt, adding that the bullet bust all his tires. The gunmen were about 10 heavily armed with AK-47 rifle. My own attack happened last Monday. It appears I was the first person they attacked. I went to the village with my relation, a lawyer who came from Abuja immediately immediately after I entered a hammerful from Ebony Boundary. I passed a military checking point, but nobody was at that at that checking point. After two poles or three po thereabout, I saw about five boys in my front. Instantly, I sensed danger and immediately I started reversing, but because of all the heavy logs of who the soldiers left on the road, they were able to shoot at my car. In the confusion, I veered off the road. All my tires had burst and because of the bullet they rode on my car, they felt they had gotten me. In the middle of the confusion, I managed through God's grace and drove the car out with deflated tires and escaped, he narrated. Meanwhile, Sahara reporters gathered that the bandits used the new power line of the transmission company of Nigeria to invade the town. Although those kidnapped have been released after the reported payment of a huge ransom in Benue State, the residents of a harmful community is now live in fear. A security source told Sahara reporters that over 237 expanded bullet shells were recovered from the scene of the attack, showing that the bandits came prepared for war. My people, I don't see as they happen. This one, they happen for Benue State. And, um, mm, 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 mm. Nigeria, we held it. <laughs> oh, say, tell me, be. Um, every day, the issue of insecurity is what we are looking at. And I don't know when this nation is going to be better. Meanwhile, this is where I'm going down the curtain. Thank you for listening. God bless you.